Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A real pleasure to be able to speak to you today. Thanks for taking the time. Nice to meet you. Thank you for the invitation. Maybe we could kick off with a brief intro. I mean, a very difficult film, I guess, to define in a few words. Um, but what can people expect when they watch Don't Expect Too Much from the End of the World? Well, uh, I don't know. it is a film which is two hours and 45 minutes long, almost. Credits included. I would say that uh, to, to its... Uh, um, praise, if I can say it myself, is that at least it comprises many things and many genres, where it's a, in, in part a road movie, in part is a comedy, in part is a socio-economical -eco, socio story. It mixes an old Romanian film embedded into my film. So it's a lot of things into one film. So at least um, one of these might appeal to some people. And uh, if not, I, I at least I did my best. And maybe you talk, talk us through, you know, even just the title itself, which I believe is taken from, you know, a poet. Um, um, so, so what was the meaning behind that? And was that kind of starting off point? What was the initial germ of the idea that, that, that um, made you want to make the film? Uh, someone said that, uh, how it's called it, he said that the title is the pimp of the work. <laughs> Actually, I think I like the title because um, it mixes a kind of serious and pessimistic um, perspective with an ironical and humorous attitude. So in a way, I saw that it represents the best, uh, the two di directions that the film has, in my opinion, or uh, as far as I can judge it myself, that is on one hand very serious and on one hand very non-serious. And uh, so it, it it always goes into opposite uh, opposite uh, directions, and I think the title expresses that better than than I could uh, find myself a title for that. Call it to and fro or back back and forth or something like that. And as you're saying, you know, it kind of resists any specific genre. Um, I don't even know how you kind of define it. You know, some something like a collage, but it does seem to even in the form itself by breaking with sort of conventions, you know, is it kind of mirroring elements of modern life, you know, the sort of constant interruptions and different mediums, um, you know, moving from the black and white to the color. Um, so that even the form itself seems to be making a comment and is aiding in the storytelling. I think you're completely right in this, uh, in this um, uh, sentence. And um, I don't know what more to add. Maybe the fact that uh, working on my last two feature films in this way because there's some common uh, structural elements uh, with my previous film um, made me to accept more easily and more gladly this fragmentation of our attention span and of our life um, uh, in 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 uh, in in this new society, special with the advent of all the. Um, digital uh, and and uh, digital space and digital world etc where we are living most of us at least one part of our lives um, until now i had the feeling that uh, i don't want to be interrupted so much etc but now i i find a kind of pleasure <laughs> into that so and i'm sure that's because of ma we're making these films yeah i think i think you're right mm -hmm. And and tell us about um, the people involved with the film, your cast. Um, how do you decide, you know, who's going to take on the role of Angela and getting Nina on board? Um, and I guess, you know, you need people who are a bit gung-ho to kind of go on this journey with you and do something kind of non-conventional. And you very much seem to find that. I uh, I think uh, they um, they are good. Uh, part of them uh, are actors like uh, like the young Angela, but also the older lady who's playing the old Angela and played in the old film. They are professional actors, so they are quite um, eager to 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 do a film with me. It's true that uh, I I played a little bit of a trick to the to the Dorina Lazar, the old lady that. I, I told her that the film is going to be a decent film with no vulgarities, but uh, I didn't keep my word to her, but she she saw the film and she's fine with it in the end. And uh, for the non-professionals was also um, another type of challenge because they are in this situation. They are 
persons with uh, hand, handicaps or these problems. And I, I contacted them through an association they are part of. And they were all very eager to, to do the film because I wasn't sure if to take actors or these persons. And they, they, they were very enthusiastical because there's not many opportunities they have to do something else that they do in, in, their, in their limited uh, life, actually. So uh, apart from that, I think, uh, well, I, I, I don't, uh, I don't pay so much accent on actors' performances. Maybe because on one hand I'm not a good director to extract, as you say, uh, as people say, great performance out of the actors. But also because I think it's not needed. I, I like them as they are, so so to speak. So, so it was very easy to work with. I. I don't have stories, you know, for that. <laughs> and maybe you can just talk us through, you know, the shooting process and because there are so many different elements to it. Uh, and then, of course, probably in the end, like putting that all together. So um, mm -hmm. what were some of the highlights? What were some of the challenges? Did you have a favorite part of the film that you shot? Well, challenges um, are my lack of talent, first of all. But I surpassed that, uh, accepting it, so to speak. <laughs> and let it uh, just be. And uh, apart from that, yes, I, I think uh, it was this desire, how should I say, without being uh, maybe completely out of the line or, or mis, uh, misplaced. Uh, my, the, the desire was and still is in what I'm trying to do, um, less to make a fulfilled film and uh, and, a, and and a very accomplished product, artistic product, but more a kind of a process and more a kind of a sketchy thing, in such a way that it uh, it's maybe it, it's not as uh, fulfilled and and not as good as uh, it can be, but I think it's more open and it breathes 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 more, and um, it uh, I, I'm 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 thinking of this not in terms of because I, I I was reluctant to say it or not, because people can accuse you very easily of being lazy or uh, inconsiderate. But on the contrary, I say that by leaving it a little bit more open, I invite the audience to to somehow imagine it differently or think about it more or whatever, you know, this, this thing. So from this point of view, there were no challenges because I somehow accepted whatever it was. For instance, we, we shot a lot in a documentary style in real places. I did very, very few takes, accepting when actors made a mistake or something. Of, of course, then you, you have to keep the project together. You cannot let it completely open because it falls down. But apart from that, I try to let it as open as possible, to have a sketch and not a, a finished uh, thing. And in terms of what people can take away, I mean, I guess you sort of touched on a few points um, by sort of allowing all these different elements to kind of sit together. You know, the audience can kind of draw what they want from it. Um, but, you know, it does feel like it is a, a comment on um, life in contemporary society, you know, elements like Andrew Tate, you know, what what is the impact of social media? Um, you know, the fact that these people with disabilities kind of, you know, for a thousand euros, you know, kind of giving up their time, um, you know, something about capitalism in there. What, what do you think people should take away from watching it? I, I think um, if you want that, that um, Romania is somehow uh, at the periphery of Europe, not only geographically, but also, uh, let's say, politically and economically and uh, civilizationally in, in a certain way. And uh, in a very complicated position, also historically, because it was always between the empires, between uh, Austrian Empire and the Russian Empire, and before that Ottoman Empire was close to it. So it was always somewhere uh, between. And uh, I think this position, uh, which is a problem for, for, the, for the development of, of, of Romania, is also an interesting uh, position because the things develop differently in certain ways. Imagine that after the 1989 revolution, after a brutal dictatorship, uh, the new regime came with a completely chaotic time. And then uh, what Romania embraced was a kind of liber neoliberal capitalism with no social protection, etc. So I think that the way the economy and the life 
functions there is in in certain way more acute or more different more uh, more critical than in other places of of europe and i i hope that the description of uh, of of this kind of life of a few people because i don't i don't have the pretension that the film is a generalization of of uh, of Romania, it's it's it, it just shows a few people caught in this web of relations and of this new life and of new economy. I think that I hope that this portrait is relevant also for for people living in other parts of the world where they can recognize maybe something from their lives or they can see the differences or or the dangers or some possibilities. I don't know. And I was reading, you know, a lot of glowing reviews um, from film festivals that it's already uh, appeared at. Um, what does that mean to you to kind of know that your film is connected with audiences um, and critics alike? Making a film, uh, despite that uh, some some people can criticize you for that, is that they say, oh, these filmmakers do the, the films for themselves and only Hollywood is doing for the people. I think the opposite. Uh, I, You know, I used to work, uh, I did all the kind of uh, jobs in this business to make a living. And at some point I was working in commercial television, doing TV shows, all kinds of things, actually. And if you would hear how uh, the bosses of the TV would speak publicly about audiences, saying, oh, we love people, we do commercial things because we are not elitists, we love the people, etc. But... In our private meetings in the TV station, they would say things like, come on, we all know that these are fucking morons. They are idiots. They are whores and bitches and idiots. So this is our audience. Don't forget that. Don't try to make things more, more, more better, you know, because they are idiots. And actually, I, I don't consider people idiots. And, uh, and I, I, I was disgusted by that attitude. And on the contrary, I try to do my best uh, because I really trust that 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 people are more intelligent than than I am. So when when the film is recognized, uh, I I feel uh, uh, very very good, and of course I'm grateful to all this kind of recognition. And if it's not, um, well, I never blame the, the people, but I cannot also blame myself. I say that because especially in Romania, I'm very often accused that I do elitist things that they are not for the people. So my answer is that I don't want to become like the bosses of television to consider people idiots. On the contrary, I try to offer the best I can, and this is what I did. Very, very well put. Um, I, I'm out of time, but just very quickly, do you already know what you're going to work on for your next project? Is it going to sort of share some DNA with this? You know, what will you take forward from this to, to, to your next one? Well, I'm finishing two montage films that are more like essayistic work. One uh, is with uh, advertisements from Romania from the 90s and early 2000s. So it's it's like a dream. It's, it's like a dreamed history of Romania after the 1989 revolution. And um, I'm preparing also fiction films, actually two. One is a Dracula story, because I said that finally someone from Transylvania should do it. And my father is from Transylvania, so I'm, I, 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 I want to do the definite, uh, the definitive <laughs> Dracula, <laughs> the local version. And uh, also another film which is about um, the conflict of personal ethics and moral with a collective uh, moral and in, and it involves the real estate development so it's more social film uh, so this this these things for the for the moment amazing well definitely we're going to be kept out of trouble with all of that um thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me and i can't wait for everyone else to see your really fascinating for the invitation oh. yeah, thank you sorry to chat to you